So towards the end of my last pregnancy, I was shooting an episode of Lovers and Friends with a guest and my brother-in-law, Cray, who works for us, came around to tell me a couple of notes. And one of the notes was, oh, that mirror that you ordered is gonna be delivered today. I said, all right, thank you. He said, when it gets delivered, I know it goes in your bedroom, where do you want me to put it? Do you want me to put it over here or by the bed? And then he made some joke, the guest laughed, he laughed, they moved on, but I got deeply humiliated. I felt really embarrassed, I felt really awkward, and I thought to myself, save this feeling for later and reflect on it. And so later when I reflected on like, why did that bother me so much? I realized that that was the first time in my life that I felt like people were talking about my sexuality or the prospect of me having sex in a way that you would talk to grandparents. Like, oh, in case you guys wanna get freaky later, knowing that they're probably gonna be asleep by 6 p.m. And not that that was Cray's intention or that, that that's what he was saying, but the real truth underneath that feeling was that I didn't feel sexual. I didn't feel sexy. So the thought of me having sex made me feel awkward. And the thought of other people picturing me having sex made me feel deeply humiliated. And I still am battling with that to this day. This video is sponsored by Audible. Audible is the best place for audio entertainment, whether you are into audiobooks, podcasts, guided meditations, or you love Audible originals like me. Audible allows you to get all of that and store it in one convenient place. As an Audible member, you can choose one title each month from their entire catalog, including bestsellers and new releases. Now, here, is the best part. If you have yet to try Audible yet, you can become a member for free for 30 days on their 30 day free trial, which will allow you to get one audiobook that you keep forever, plus access to their incredible catalog with so many things to listen to. So here's what you're gonna do. Go to audible.com slash Shan Booty to sign up for 30 days for free. Or if you prefer to text, no problem. You can text the word Sham Booty to the phone number 500-500. One more again, to try Audible for free for 30 days and to keep one title forever from trying it for free for 30 days, all you gotta do is go to audible.com slash Sham Booty or text the word Sham Booty to the number 500-500. At the end of this video, I have some very, very personal recommendations on what title you can choose as your freebie. Hi there, lovers and friends. So in full disclosure, going into motherhood, I was well aware that there was going to be a struggle to preserve my sexuality, to fight for my right to feel and be a sexual person. So this thing happens when you become a mom where the more aware of and enjoy of your sexual self, the less you are perceived of being aware of and skilled at being a parent. And then after having my first daughter, Ryu, I was really relieved to find that my feelings about my sexual self stayed intact, but I was battling against the world's opinion of my sex appeal. Studies show that people who do feel good and sexy and attracted to themselves, not only experience more sexual desire, not only respond more to erotic materials because they have an easier time picturing themselves as the leading person, um, they also experience more sexual pleasure. When we don't feel good about our bodies, we don't get to feel the optimal benefits of our bodies, which is why I am massively interested around the politics of the beauty standard and the sexiness standard. And while I was pregnant, I became even more fixated on this because all of a sudden, I didn't qualify whatsoever. But this time around, things are different. And there's a couple of differences. One, throughout this pregnancy, I had an extreme loss of sex drive that I allowed myself to really lean into and relax into. And two, there's less opportunities to turn mom mode off. And it's very difficult to see yourself through a sexual lens when you spend 90% of your day like this. And I'm gonna be honest with everyone here. For the first time, in my relationship for sure. And probably for the first time since I began this YouTube channel, which for me was sharing my confidence and my knowledge and my expertise as a sexual educator because I myself felt very confident in myself as a sexual being, I feel like an outsider 
of sex. And so when I'm engaging in the act, whether it be through solo play or through partnered play, I have a deep sense of imposter syndrome. Like I don't believe myself, even though my body is responding in the same ways and in some ways, better ways. I experienced a lot more sensation after having my first child um, through sex and now even more so. I feel like my body has more nerve endings. It fires better. It feels good. It feels great, but I don't feel it. And that is my truth. And so in reflecting on why this is, I came back to my favorite book, which I reference all the time in a chapter that I think everyone should read, which is called Love is Political. And there's a concept in here that's called spectatoring. And so I wanna read. Imagine two people involved in an encounter, one of whom is able to immerse fully in pleasurable sexual sensations, and another who is preoccupied with the appearance of their body to the outside world. Researchers refer to this as spectatoring. People who struggle with spectatoring are usually people who do not fit inside the mold of people who should be having sex. And that mold that is reinforced constantly to us is young, single, thin, able-bodied, attractive, childless individuals. And so when we don't find ourselves ticking a lot of those boxes, we can tend to not view ourselves through a societal sexual gaze. And unfortunately, that can also impact the way that you personally see yourself. And I realized that I stopped qualifying myself as sexual because I'm different. And unfortunately, I have registered those differences as different bad rather than different good or different, I'm in control and I can change that. So I came up with a list of things that I really wanted to work on in order to reconnect myself to my sexual potential. And I was tempted to say just now, reconnect myself to my sexual self, but I can't reconnect to something that I don't know yet. And I choose to be excited about creativity, even though the process of getting it right is not always that pretty. So here are the things that I'm currently engaging in that I think might be helpful for anyone, whether you feel confident in your sexual self and just wanna invite more, or like me, you're redefining what that even means. The first thing is kind of a mix. It's half fake it till you make it and half make it so you don't have to fake it. And fake it till you make it essentially means that if you're struggling right now to put yourself in an erotic mindset, invite more erotic materials in your life that help you get there. And for me, that has been audio entertainment. Watching porn or watching visual things, again, if I am already self-conscious about the way that I view myself, viewing things isn't really helpful. It's my imagination. It's that potential thing that really gets me there. And on top of that, it's given me some pretty fire um, tips for things to try and phrases to say that get me in a sexy mood. Now, the other half of that is make it so you don't have to fake it. Something that I've never really been attracted to before is the spiritual sexual world. And that is because I think the physical world or the literal world worked so well for me. So the idea of going into the unknown felt a little hokey, to be honest, and I've tried. I have gone to chakra classes, I have done breath work, and oftentimes my engagement in these things just feels it feels like imposter syndrome, um, probably because it is, because I'm not mentally on those frequencies. But I had a guest on the Lovers and Friends podcast, Tanariel, and she talked about sacred sexuality and everything she said was like, yes, yes, yes. I had just learned about pleasure mapping from my somatic healer. And you literally touch your body from like your head to your toes, but you do it very slowly. So you start to just trace things, but the intention is to pay attention to things you may have never noticed before. For me, it was like the back of my knees, <laughs> which I was like, oh. And you're kind of saying to yourself, I love you over and over again in your mind. So I'm pretty excited about that. I have traditionally been someone who's been pretty proud of not being in the woo-woo sex world, but now I'm excited to give it a try. 
and I definitely and of course will be taking all of you on that journey and as somebody who is not an expert but someone who is an explorer of it let's see where we go another effort that I'm joyfully inviting into my world as I attempt to redefine and reconnect with my righteous sexual self is fixing my ick the things about me that make me turned off of me and as you're experiencing the world this is your POV right your POV of yourself is you know you could do it right now you could see what you can look down and see and a big part of that is hands and feet and I rarely have my nails done and my feet are atrocious the dry heels especially and how those dry heels impact my sex life because when I hear them against the sheets oh my gosh nonetheless uh, this is an area that I'm definitely going to be inviting expertise I might also do an episode about that so many ideas for videos but also to please in the comment section if you know anything it's going to be like an SOS save my feet manageable kit for someone like myself who obviously has just neglected them for so so long and has a hard time including foot care in my daily care that suggestion i'm looking for please and lastly i really brainstormed things i can do today no questions asked to make an impact in the sex that i'm going to have tonight so there's not this like having to work towards or having to fix these are things i can just implement instantly and i love lists of three because beyond that it just feels too unapproachable just too overwhelming so the three things that I identified that would be really helpful for me are one to intentionally slow down um, and everything in life but definitely during sex number two to focus on sound a little more intentionally I know what my triggers are with sound I know what sounds take me out of the experience I know what sounds I have to invite in even though they're not that sexy but they're just part of my life and the very last thing is I'm not going to talk to my partner about this. And I'll explain each of those tips um, a little bit more in full. So first and foremost is slowing down. Um, this is just a universal tip. If you ever feel awkward doing anything except for running, going slower is going to make it better, more mindful, less chaotic looking, and less chance of very awkward things happening. And this can be a challenge for me because when you're embarrassed you move a little quicker you talk more quickly when you're embarrassed and so i have to really be like we're going to move snail pace slow when we're changing positions when we're getting things out when we're taking things off when we're putting things on slow and steady sounds okay after you have a baby, you're very juicy. Immediately after, you're super juicy. Like the discharge is, it's just a period for a very, very long time. But then even after that, you're just very, very schmutzy. And this sounds like a positive thing, but it's noisy. And because you've got air and liquid happening, with pressure, lots of fart, vart, squishy sounds happen that are a little bit embarrassing. And this has happened a few times where mentally, again, it makes me feel like I'm not qualified for the situation. I feel like I shouldn't be doing this. I'm the kind of person who should be doing this. Like these embarrassing things wouldn't happen to a sexual person. And I found that playing music or having something on so that that just eases the sound a little bit, doesn't have to be overwhelming, has been beneficial to me. And so usually I'm the kind of person who doesn't like music in the bedroom because I want to focus and be very sensually engaged. But now I can stand to turn the volume down on some of those senses. And so I'm gonna turn the volume up on music and I'm saying yes to that for myself. In terms of inviting sounds in, we have to have sex with a baby monitor. And Hearing a baby cry midway through could be a little awkward or hearing them move, but I find that if I have the music on and we're being sexual and we've removed ourselves so that the kids can't hear us, I get mentally preoccupied that something is happening with them if I don't, again, have access to hearing them that easily. So bringing a baby monitor in just eases the time and I have to embrace this is where I'm at. Like I'm not a single person having sex. I am a mom of two with my husband 
having an incredible experience and exchange together, but I can't neglect that other side of me while I'm doing that. Everything has to come in the bedroom in the least awkward way possible. And the last intentional thing that I'm doing to give myself a better shot at having better sex today, even though I'm in the practice of doing more long-term things, my short-term fix is gonna be not telling my partner. And that is surprising for me because I'm queen over share. So at this point, I am nine months pregnant. Um, and so we're at the end of the line, which means more sex, yeah. but it does definitely mean more uncomfortable sex. I'm uncomfortable right now, to be honest with you. I'm yeah. uncomfortable literally all of the time. I could be wrong, but I just personally feel like the insecurities that I'm experiencing during this time could be contagious and as a result, counterproductive to what I need to get past this and to get past this stage that I'm in, because I do want to get past it. I think the best way is through, not around. And going through it means still engaging and still showing up. And that can be hard to do if I plant a seed of doubt in my partner's mind that I'm not really present or I'm not really enjoying it, um, which are not true. It's just that they're not true to the capacity and potential that I know is possible for me. But I also feel like the ways that I'm gonna fix that right now feel like they're best in my control. And so, this is a journey that I'm going to go on publicly, um, but privately. Because I also know that Jerry doesn't watch my YouTube videos unless he edits them, and I'm not going to have him edit this video. Now, don't get me wrong. In hindsight, once I am orbiting and orgasming from the 15th dimension through my eighth chakra, I will probably let him in on the secret of, hey, this is how I came to be. I was at a low place and now I've ascended. But while I'm here in this uncertain place, let's just, let's just keep it here. Before I get out of here, I want to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Audible, and you just might want to say thank you to them too if you take them up on their incredible free trial offer, which allows you to become an Audible member for three days for free 99, no cost at all. And through this, you get to keep one audiobook of your choosing forever. Plus for the month, you get access to their Audible Originals catalog. So thousands of hours of listening. Best of all, you can actually download things to your Audible library so you can stream and listen to them on any device, anywhere that you go. And I've been going some places with the help of Audible and I'm gonna suggest, if you're in the same space of me of life, that you may want to come along. So here's some audiobook recommendations from my very, very personal list to you. Sex, Explicit Erotic Stories by Lauren Rose, and Orgasmic, Erotica for Women. And of course, as always, I must suggest my audiobook, The Game of Desire, which is read by me. So lots of great reasons to give this a try. And speaking of giving things a try, I'm really excited to read the comment section to hear your suggestions because I am open wide open. That's the phase I'm in right now. Breaking a bed, breaking a bed, had that kill for that.